Hello, everyone. Welcome to this weekend's broadcast. Mr. Mike Pierce into the hot seat next to me again this weekend. You know, it does get hot over there. It does. It does. The lights <laughs> definitely warm it up a little bit. But, Max, I tell you, it was hot down in Louisville this week for the Farm Machinery Show. Big crowds, big attendance. We've got all kinds of machinery coming from all over the world. It is a great show always. And as I mentioned to you off the air, the geography is impressive. You'll run into people there from the Northern Plains all the way down to the Gulf Coast and from Ontario, Canada. <laughs> well, you got to get out of the cold somehow. It means a lot to agriculture, but it means a lot as well to the folks in that region around Louisville, Kentucky. It brings a lot of commerce in there when these people of agriculture travel a considerable distance to be there. That's right. We welcome people to the 55th annual National Farm Machinery Show. We expect 300,000 people to enter the fairgrounds here in Louisville, Kentucky. They're spending money. They're overnighting. We hope to be great hosts here in Kentucky. We have 1.2 million square feet of indoor uh, showroom place. And so we're, uh, I like to tell people, we're the biggest farm machinery show held indoors in North America. What do you sense from the farmers with whom you speak here? You know, every farm show gives me the opportunity to kind of take the pulse of what's going on in the farm economy. Right now, people are glad 2019 is behind us. A lot of states, including Kentucky, had a rough production year in 2019. It was too wet. We're here in Kentucky, it was too dry. People are optimistic about trade, though. People seem to be pretty uh, encouraged by the phase one agreement with China, uh, the passage of USMCA and it being signed, and, and other trade deals on the horizon. So a lot of folks are looking forward to getting back out in the field and have a prosperous 2020. We've watched with interest as your ag industry in the state has diversified. Is it continuing to do so? That's right. Kentucky has a really diversified ag uh, portfolio. We grow everything from apples to zucchinis and everything in between. We have horses here in a big and significant way. Uh, we're also having uh, new emerging crops uh, ranging from hemp to indigo and even chia is being grown right here in Kentucky. A lot of folks carving out a niche market. There's been so much uh, interest in hemp and the feeling that those who had been in the tobacco business could make that conversion easily, yet there have been some hiccups, have there not? Uh, some growing pains. That's right, there are growing pains in the hemp industry nationwide, not just in Kentucky. We encourage all of our farmers to assess their level of risk at the farm level. Don't invest more than you're willing to lose. Be careful who you do business with, and eventually this market will stabilize. But right now we have growing pains ranging from the lack of FDA oversight to issues with our banking community, transporting it legally across state lines, and having new crop technology that other countries currently have emerging here in the United States. And so we like to tell people, take it slow and be cautious with hemp. Some of the struggles then have been with the federal government uh, outside of your control. That's right. A year ago, uh, we finally had hemp legalized for the first time in over 70 years in America. And as farmers started to test this out, we, we, we saw about a half dozen issues, and these are mainly federal issues, and, and namely the biggest one is the Food and Drug Administration's uh, uh, hesitancy in letting us know which way they're going to regulate these crops and, and products. And so we're encouraging them to be constructive partners. But we also try to remind people, hemp is just 1% of Kentucky's ag economy. We try to focus on the bread and butter, meat and potato crops we grow here in Kentucky. And, and don't put too much in and are willing to lose. Finally, Commissioner, uh, we were seeing young people coming back to the farm before the downturn of the ag economy. Are we still seeing it? Yes, uh, we have really vibrant 4-H and FFA programs here in Kentucky. Even here at the farm show, as I was pulling in this morning, I was flanked by school buses of young people coming here. We always have to make sure that we inspire young people to choose agriculture as a career.